Eğer ki. Eğer ki. Hayatımızda hiç eğer olmasaydı nasıl olurdu? Size şöyle söyleyeyim. Her şey daha az parlak, daha az yeşil olurdu. Ve daha az parlak yeşil. Çünkü eğerler ormanların derinliklerinde tek bir kibritle derinlerin kıvılcımını ateşler. Eğerler Nobel ve Guggenheim'ın aklına takılır. Ve o kodu bu kodu çözerler. Eğerlerle içinizden haykırmak gelir. Eğerler bariyerleri kırarlar. Asla yalnız yürümezler ve aşırı bulaşıcıdırlar. Eğerler... Hello everybody. So welcome to the second international conference on the forthcoming networks and sustainability in the Internet of Things era, FONES IoT 2022. It is our pleasure to welcome you to the second Springer International Conference, FONES IoT, which is held in Nicosia, North Cyprus due to the safety concerns, of course, and the troubling restrictions uh, that has been caused by COVID-19. Uh, we are providing the conference uh, online for the live streaming. The conference received in total 350 submissions from the international research community. The papers went through a rigorous review process where at least three reviewers are assigned for each manuscript. The program committee members, as well as the external reviewers, have contributed to the review process based on the reviews obtained. 112 papers only are accepted for presentation at the conference. The authors submitted the final camera-ready version of up to 20 pages, resulting in an acceptance ratio of 37%, which is quite a competitive ratio. Three candidates for the Best Paper Award have been also selected based on the reviews, recommendations of the senior TPC members and additional feedback from the organizing and steering committees. These papers will be announced in the last session of the conference, so stay tuned with us. The accepted papers provide insight into the literature and findings in areas related to communication aspects, energy efficiency, and artificial intelligence in IoT, 5G networks, and cloud services. We would like to thank all those who contributed to the success of this conference. We thank the authors for submitting their works and the reviewers for their time in providing rigorous, timely reviews. We would like also to thank Professor Dr. Erfan Suad Konsal and Professor Dr. Mustafa Kurt, the honorary chairs of the Springer Phones IoT 2022 steering committee and the conference uh, manager, uh, Jawad Rashid uh, from Istanbul. We would like also to welcome you again to enjoy this uh, venue and we wish you nice and pleasant time. This is Professor Dr. Fadi al Turjman, the General Chair of FONES IoT 2022 and the Director of the Research Center for AI and IoT and the, also the recently established Institute for AI and Robotics in Near East University. We are here welcoming you and we wish you a pleasant time. Let me give you an idea at the beginning what will be the conference about mainly in terms of artificial intelligence and the trend of AI in everything. We are experiencing actually artificial intelligence in everything around us, in education, in law, in health, in tourism, transportation, every, literally everything involved or is involving the artificial intelligence nowadays. And this is the direction or the trend of the world. So we would like to introduce you to the concept of AI in general. We will show you some uh, applications for the AI real uh, life applications that we have been built here at the Institute of AI and Robotics at Near East University, in addition to other international ones that has contributed to the conference as well. We will show you some, or we will shed the light on some research areas as well in this uh, uh, era or field, and finally, we will conclude the conference with some uh, future direction for the research in this area. To be uh, short and uh, uh, concise, let's first in introduce the AI, which is 
uh, actually coming with different definitions nowadays. Some of them, they say AI is pretending a human interaction. Some of them, they say it is the learning and reasoning by machines. But I say it is the product of information processing. It is everything related to processing the information around us and make it useful for our daily life. And this is mainly the trend of the big data as well that has come a few years ago. So that's the AI. And um, now how it works, mainly it consists of some technical terms such as the model, the input layer, the output layer. We will not go into these details, but for those who are interested in the technical details, I advise you definitely to continue watching and following this conference because you will have all the details and you will have the chance to discuss it even with the experts in this area. Where it is applicable, it can be applied in three main segments. The segment where we don't have any knowledge about the problem or the uh, aspect that we are trying to solve or automate. The segment where we have the full knowledge and the segment where we have half knowledge. The best one or the most effective one is to apply in segment number two, which is the segment where you have half of the knowledge and you want the machine to help you in pretending and detecting some extra features or uh, specific criteria in the problem that you are trying to resolve. What are the areas that we are applying AI in? Several areas, as I mentioned at the beginning, it can be in medical uh, things, it can be in uh, COVID, for example, that we are experiencing nowadays, and this is one of the important projects that here at Near East University uh, uh, we worked on, and we have some uh, real applications for it, mobile apps, web apps that are taking the CT scan images nowadays and uploading to the cloud and giving immediately the prediction for positive or negative cases, and also tracking, help in tracking the patients to provide them better treatment. So this is one of the critical, actually, AI applications in the medical field. The other direction or field for AI applications is the smart cities that we are experiencing around us. And one of the, actually, uh, famous projects in this area was the China AI city that has been launched a few years ago, where they uh, launched a smart city that is utilizing billions of public camera cameras in the streets, uh, uh, public uh, open source platforms, to track, uh, monitor, and deliver the best service to the population in that city. Of course, there are many other uh, applications such as Google OK and other also similar uh, applications such as Alex and uh, Neo Rick that we will also introduce to you in this conference by one of the speakers where we develop our own actually a uh, platform that is working uh, in the same uh, era where the user or the customer he just need to give the command verbally or using a touch screen or using face recognition to the uh, appliances that he has in his home in his office and the appliances will automatically work and optimize their performance so you will have the chance to see all these real applications of course, there are much more uh, uh, domains for applying AI, including the restaurants, the tourism, the education system. You will see all these in this, hopefully, conference. And I wish by the end of the conference, you will have a clear idea how these kind of applications can make our life easier and uh, uh, faster in achieving our targets and objectives. I will not spend lots of time here and I will not burn all these applications. I will leave it to the speakers to talk about it. But I would like to uh, uh, conclude now and give the stage to the speakers, of course, by saying that AI is coming everywhere and it becomes now a must in our daily life that we have to use in the uh, different disciplines that we talked about. And it is a best or the best actually investment if you are a researcher or a developing company and you want to start a new business and i wish this conference will help you to achieve uh, uh, the answers maybe about this topic and if you have any more of course uh, question marks in your mind you will be very happy to receive your questions offline or online during the conference and collaborate hopefully after the conference for any
further actually opportunities and venues in the near future. So I would like to welcome you again, and I will leave the stage now to the speakers and enjoy your time with the FONIS IoT 2022. So the floor now is for my colleague, uh, Dr. Ilkar from Near East University, who will speak uh, more specifically about the Near East uh, uh, directions in uh, investing in the AI and machine learning techniques. So the floor is yours, Dr. Edgar. Good morning. Uh, good morning from Cyprus. Uh, I want to thank everybody, the organizers, the people who are listening to me. Thank you very much. I am a medical doctor. Graduated from Hacettepe University Faculty of Medicine in the middle of the other century. Then tried to be an anesthesiologist in Germany and worked in the pharmaceutical industry almost three decades. And after the age of 60, I tried to be an academic and today I will try to tell you everything I am enthusiastic at the moment. First of all, just brief information where I am. It is AI and Robotics Institute Research Center for AI and IoT. Near East University's Artificial Intelligence and Robotics Institute Research Center for AI and IoT spans computing disciplines like machine learning and cognitive next generation networks for challenging conditions, human to machine interfaces, 6G and beyond communications, intelligent multimedia services, smart spaces, etc. This is something new, but it is really old. Near East University AI and Robotics Institute Research Center for AI and IoT has 276 publications. The highest cited publication is COVID GAN data augmentation using auxiliary classifier GAN for improved COVID-19 detection. It is one of the first and it is cited 283 times up to now. Then there are actually 37 books published by the Institute. I want to give you some examples. Look, those are the examples I have. But if you go to our website, you will be able to see much more. The total number is 36, and there are a lot of others coming actually in the very near future, in the next days, and they will be all available to service you. Let me show the first, the two, two ones I really love once more, and then I want to continue showing you some others. As you see here, look, I mean, the ones I'm showing you are not really related with the healthcare, but what I'm going to talk to you after a sh uh, this short information will be dedicated to healthcare, to medicine, as I am a physician. I am here trying to teach the basic medical sciences in the faculties of pharmacy, medicine, dentistry, health sciences, and nursing. Therefore, I have students in almost all those different kinds of professions in healthcare, and I am really very happy to have students from different professions so that 
I can understand them and I can give them the ignition to start dealing with the artificial intelligence. Those are the other books I could not show you. I have them here, but it would take a lot of time. Then forthcoming books, you see six of them. There were 85 conferences up to now and 12 workshops. Now, me and my artificial intelligence in healthcare or in health sciences, in 2019, I started teaching my students in different uh, faculties. First of all, as you see, there is only one which is obligatory. All others are elective. And 71 students in the Faculty of Pharmacy, then 54 students in the Faculty of Dentistry, seven students from Health Sciences Faculty or Bioengineering, etc. 54 students I have now from the Faculty of Medicine and 191 students from actually the Faculty of Pharmacy. We had, after giving them the idea of what artificial intelligence is and what we could, what we can do together with them, that is the outlines of those courses. We had one publication together with my two students, one from the Faculty of Pharmacy, one from the Faculty of Dentistry, Decision Analysis of the COVID-19 Vaccines. And we are now about to complete another publication that is mouthwashes against COVID-19. That is coronavirus, or in other words, shortly said, inactivation of the coronavirus. The, after that, I want to talk about my target, my future, my vision, my dream. That is one of which is the drug discovery and development. There is a publication, not old, from 2020. They included 63 new therapeutic drugs out of 355 published in uh, JAMA. And they say the development cost per product is something like 1 billion. If you go through the literature, you can see up to 2.8 millions of expense or cost per product development. That is a huge amount of money. Good, but when you look at it, you see nine of 10 drug candidates failed between phase one trials and regulatory approval, making this process a little bit expensive, a little bit more expensive. And also out of 10 products, which we can make available in the, for the patients, uh, one out of 10 can be feasible. That is, we all know it takes a long time, up to 15 years, the development. And in the drug discovery and development, there are a lot of areas which I will try to concentrate on the clinical trials, the repurposing, and discovery parts mainly, uh, we can use artificial intelligence to make that development faster, easier, and cheaper. Those are very important in terms of when you see or when you remember the normal cost of 1 billion US dollars to develop a product. Let's talk about clinical studies. Those are actually, there are preclinical and clinical studies, but I just want to mention about the clinical studies because I am really interested in that part. When I was working in the pharmaceutical industry, I was medical director in many uh, companies, national and multinational in Turkey. And I was uh, dealing always with clinical studies. When I started working in Sibagaygi, which is a part of Novartis at the moment, I had to go to Egypt and uh, my lecturer, my boss, who was a medical doctor, graduated in Egypt, but did everything in the United States. 
he we sat together two weeks to learn what clinical studies what clinical trials are then uh, here we can use it i have a friend we used to work together in one of the multinational companies before and uh, we have our first understanding each other soon we will sit together to be able to apply artificial intelligence to the development of products in terms of clinical studies drug interactions i was safety officer in many companies i worked and patients especially the older patients may get multiple medications and they are at increased risk of experiencing negative effects from drug combinations particularly when they are prescribed when the prescribed drugs they have additional in terms of helping us detecting those kind of artificial intelligence there are many examples drug repurposing is something which we all know it became more popular after covid-19 now for example there is a very nice example of uh, products which are developed for different reasons but now are indicated in the treatment of different uh, diseases intellectual property challenges is very important when the products are developed there must everybody tries to get that under patent protection and artificial intelligence helps the companies to enlarge the patent protection from the other side artificial intelligence can also be used to find locks in the patent protection there is a company in simena turkey we have first connection in april we will sit together to work especially on that area which is very 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 important then i want to uh, emphasize a couple of other things first of all uh, large companies do not actually all invent most of the drugs they sell when i was working in one of the multinational companies i registered an antibiotic which was actually discovered by cleva a company from croatia and that company multinational company got the product developed it it is still available in all markets all around the world that is azithromycin that is another thing if you can discover molecules which can be effective in different areas we do not need to develop them until the end we can sit talk with the multinational companies and we can develop it together so that it can be much more feasible you see every day there are many companies artificial intelligence using startups a lot of companies trying to use it for their drug discovery and development and also pharmacovigilance that is the interactions part and i want to thank you all after i have this uh, i want to thank the artificial intelligence and robotics institute director professor dr irfan günsel vice directors professor dr mustafa kurt professor dr fadi altujman and also the team working with artificial intelligence in my university the near east university thank you very much listening to me if you have questions i will be very happy to answer them
a hybrid scheduling approach in the cloud. This is the table of content, and this is what I'll be taking you through, the introduction, the aim, the problem statement, the methodology, the result, and finally, the conclusion. So we start with the introduction. What is the cloud? This is servers that are accessed over the internet, softwares, and databases that run on the server. You can see the user is trying to access the cloud resource from the cloud. This field is known as an emerging field. It has grown in wide popularity in recent years. We can see the growth map. You can see it has grown to 50.1 billion in year 2020. The aim here about design is to act scheduling process for the cloud, maximize resource utilization, reduce the processing time and cost, and maximize resource throughput. The problem that arise from this are how can we maximize the use of this resource? How can we maximize revenue and reduce cost? How can we control a large number of requests? How can the resource be utilized properly? And how can we meet clients per work for sites? The solution is this, we're applying tax scheduling. This is the process by which incoming requests are arranged in a manner that available resource can be utilized properly. Cloud providers use this tax scheduling to maximize revenue and reduce costs. They also use it to manage incoming requests so that the resource can be utilized efficiently. So we are not just applying tax scheduling, we're going to be optimizing it using the genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithm is a meta heuristic approach and it works on the basis of genetics and natural selection. This is the architecture where the user requests for a particular resource, a particular tax in the, in the IoT cloud. Then apply tax scheduling to it and finally it's going to be virtualized to the user. The method here, the data center broker is in between the cloud provider and the user. The data center broker checks for the availability of resource and resource status. And it's stored in the CSI, which is the cloud information service. So once the data center has been created, it is stored in the cloud information service. So once a user requests for a particular tax, the data center broker checks for the availability of those resources, the resource status, and it's going to assign it based on what the scheduling algorithm. The baseline for this is the first come first serve, the search as your first and the round robin. These are the traditional optimization technique, but here we're going to be proposing an hybrid GE. The computational environment we're using is the Eclipse, the cloud sim, Java programming language, Intel Core i7 processor, GPU e first, round 12 gig, and a DX with one TV. Before we start, we have to have various assumptions. Jobs will be more than the quantity of VMs. Each tax is allo allocated to just a single VM. The length of the undertaking fluctuates from little, medium, and enormous. Jobs are not interfered with once they are executed. VMs are autonomous regarding assets and control. The accessible VMs are reused and cannot be divided between various assignments. The computational parameters we're going to be using, we're going to be using from the user side and from the provider side. From the user side, we're using the total waiting time, the total execution time, and the total finish time, and the economic cost. From the provider side, we're using the throughput, availability, and the resource utilization. And this is our simulation parameters that we're going to be using to conduct this experiment. The first baseline is the first come first serve. It's static, it's a traditional optimization technique. The first job that comes in is going to be executed first, regardless of the time. So the order of jobs matters in this undertaking. The next is the shortest job first. It's also static. The order of the job doesn't matter. It looks for the job with the shortest time and it executes that first. And the last is the round robin. This is unique in a way that a time is given to all process. So it gives tax fairness and all tax have been executed simultaneously. These are all the traditional optimization techniques, your fast, the durable, and your reliable. So here we're proposing an hybrid approach, which is the GE. First and first, we're going to initialize the population, then perform the round robin calculation, then calculate the fitness. After the fitness, we're going to select the best for the crossover and the mutation. I'm going to perform what is known as elitism and the local search. And finally, we terminate once the condition has been met. And these are the parameters for our hybrid process. First thing is the initialization of the population. Each individual or each chromosome contains what? The VM ID and the tax ID. For example, it is embedded as the VM and the tax are assigned to the VM. 
Then we perform our round robin calculation. Here, our round robin is going to be dyna dynamic. We're going to get the median of each process so that the shortest job and the largest job have fairness within them. And after what, we're going to calculate what? The fitness, which is the total completion time of each process, right here is a set of tax and RJ is a set of process. So here, the aim is to reduce this time. So we have to calculate the total execution time. So the processing speed of virtual machine RJ is PSJ. Then the processing time for tax PI is going to be calculated using this, which is PIJ, the computational complexity over the processing speed. Afterwards, we have to calculate for each tax on each virtual machine using this formula here. Then afterwards, we have to select the fittest individuals. So we're going to be using the tournament selection, which is amenable to parallel implementation. So based on this formula, we'll be able to detect which individual is fit enough. Where this is the expected fitness distribution, this is the fitness, and this is the probability of choosing a better fit individual. But after our selection, we perform the mating pool, select our parents who perform the crossover, so be a new offspring. So here, yeah, the parents and the offspring are four in total. So from these four, we select the best two from them, then perform the mutation operation in order to get a more fitter value. Then finally, we get our first generation. Based on that, we perform the local search to get a more fitter generation. So we're going to perform the replacement where a fitter individual is going to replace the less fitter individual. And once our stopping criteria has been met, we stop the process or we loop it over again. So based on this, we perform some experiment and these are the results, the total execution time, the total finish time and the total waiting time. We can see our approach performed tremendously based on this. The next is the cost. We have to reduce the cost. For our approach, we can see the costs are lesser than other algorithms. And finally, the throughput, we have to maximize the throughput. And our algorithm performed tremendously based on it tax 10, 20, 30, and 40. It performed tremendously well. Then the last is the resource utilization. We have to maximize the amount of resources being used. And we can see our algorithm performed tremendously based on this. Then here we are comparing our research with other proposed algorithms. You can see we are using from both the user and the provider desired, while other researchers use just one. And our criteria are being a more, and others just picked one or two to make our work more, our more valid. So the conclusion, we designed a tax schedule model for the cloud. Baseline for our model is the first come first serve, the social job first, and the round ribbon. We optimize it using an hybrid J. The parameters for validations are total finish time, total execution time, total waiting time, the throughput, resource utilization, and finally the cost. Our model outperformed other models. The future work will be improving it with other scheduling algorithm. More parameter criteria will be used, improve the use criteria, and more optimization technique will be applied. Thank you. Title position estimation and smooth tracking with fuzzy logic based adaptive front tracking Kalman Tilka for capacitive tax panel. The outline will be as shown in the slide introduction. Objective capacitive touch panel CT. Hi everyone, today I will present. Um, the title Position Estimation and Smooth Tracking with Fuzzy Logic Based Adaptive Strong Tracking Kalman Filter for Capacitive Touch Panels. The outline will be as shown in the slide introduction. Objective Capacitive Touch Panel CTP Moving Average Filter Math Kalman Filter Strong Tracking Kalman Filter Fuzzy Logic Based Adaptive Strong Tracking Kalman Filter and MATLAB Implementation Results with Conclusion and Future Works. The introduction of a Capacitive Touch Panel that uh, firstly many applications of CTP uh, have been used 
in mobile phones, digital cameras, navigation system, TVs, and uh, PCs. Uh, it has uh, many components such as resistive touch panel and uh, capacitive touch panel. Uh, the resistive touch panel that consists of two thin transparent and conductive layers such as uh, indium tin oxide films which are separated by narrow gap where capacitive touch panel uh, has been achieved because of its sensitivity, excellent uh, durability and multi-touch functionality. But uh, CTP uh, is affected by noise produced by finger trembling environmental magnetic interference or process variation leading to the inaccurate prediction of touch positions and zigzag output. CTP system consisting of controller system. Uh, laptop computer, the microcontroller system consisting of MCU microcontroller unit, sensor IC and an interface board is used to detect the variation in capacitive of CTP and generate raw data to the laptop computer as shown in this slide. The sensor IC receives commands from MCU to scan CTP by using self or mutual capacitance sensing method. The sensor collects analog signals which are transformed into digital data via analog to digital converter before transmitting these data to MCU and then generating raw data of digital data MCU also determines whether CTP has been touched or not. The laptop computer receives raw data from USB interface board at the reporting rate of 100 Hz when a touching event occurs. On the other hand, signals that are sensed by sensor IC must be uh, processed because they are always contaminated by noise and finger trembling. Now in this paper, noise of the sensed signals is reduced by using weighted average method in order to determine the touched position. The objective is to mitigate the effect of measurement noise and provide a smooth tracking trajectory at different speeds. When the touch point is sensed from X1 to X4 in the X axis and from Y1 to Y4 in the Y axis, the touch location X2, Y2 as shown in this slide to clarify the problem of single finger is recognized by measuring each row and column channel. Hence, two sine waveforms from X axis and Y axis are extracted from sensor IC to locate the touched point by weighted average method. The figure shown uh, the contaminated sense signal in the actual touch conditions as affected by noise and slight change in capacitance of touched point. There are many solutions in literature review that uh, that uh, uh, are trying to solve this uh, problem. Uh, firstly, uh, MAF move, moving average filter method. MAF is frequently used to eliminate the measurement noise and locate the touched position, but it needs large number of points in a specific intervals to filter out a significantly high frequency noise leading to amplitude decay and signal delay. The advantage of MAF just eliminates the high frequency noise yielding less smooth trajectory, but as we said, the disadvantage of degrading the amplitude and signal delay. Kalman filter to mitigate this noise problem, Kalman filter has been utilized and also to reduce the noise and estimate the state vectors accurately that carry sensor information, including position, velocity, and angle. Uh, despite the effectiveness of KF in suppressing the noise and accurately evaluating the touched position in CTP, the performance of KF method depends on precise prior knowledge on the process noise covariance matrix Q and 
measurement noise covariance matrix R. Under touch conditions, the measurement noise varies with movement speed of touch. At high speed, it produces less noise because few sampling points are found in a fixed distance and vice versa. At uncertain speed of touch movement degrades the estimated ability of Kalman filter method with fixed Q and R matrices. Kalman filter requires exact knowledge of both dynamic process and measurement model. For these reasons, KF models don't fit the behavior of fast and nonlinear movement of the touching finger. The modeling error of Kalman filter causes an error in estimating the touched position. So the disadvantages of Kalman filter are using phase Q and R matrices with uncertain speed, KF ability will be degraded to estimate the touched movement. KF method fails to estimate the touching finger with fast and nonlinear movement. The other method is strong tracking Kalman filter. By applying suboptimal scaling factor, which is added to Kalman filter, STKF adjust the prediction covariance matrix in real time. It provides reliable real time tracking ability estimates matrix in real time. To estimate the touched position with satisfactory precision when movement in fast and nonlinear subsequently yielding a predicted trajectory that matches the actual trajectory. The disadvantage of STKF is failure in estimating finger movement with low speed, but the advantage of STKF that success in estimating normal and fast speeds of touched position. However, if the movement at low speeds yields significant amount of measurement noise, then phased Q and R matrices of Kalman filter and STKF methods fail to capture the measurement noise accurately, subsequently degrading the filter performance and yielding errors when estimating the touched position. The proposed method is to integrate STKF with fuzzy logic to improve tracking ability of CTP system, which is known as fuzzy logic based adaptive strong tracking Kalman filter. Fuzzy logic controller is used to adjust QK adaptively for the change of the measurement noise. Fuzzy logic controller to increase the accuracy of determining the trajectory, yielding a smooth tracking trajectory at all speeds. This slide shows the fuzzy logic system that consists of four processes, fuzzification, inference engine, knowledge base, and defuzzification. The first process, fuzzification, is to establish a mapping process between crisp input value and defined fuzzy set. Inference engine calculates the membership value by using knowledge base that collects the different knowledge about the behavior in the form of a fuzzy if-then rule. And finally, the fuzzification process then converts fuzzy set into crisp value by using the established mapping. Uh, this slide uh, shows the membership function that uh, are triangle for both input variables for linguistic description. The main objective of uh, fuzzy logic in this system is to monitor the parameter phi, which represent the speed of finger and innovation sequence V in order to adjust QK value. Phi parameter is applied by membership function shown in figure and V parameter, which is innovation sequence that represent error between measured and touched position is represented in the membership number uh, in the other uh, graph as shown in the figure. 
uh, the fuzzy logic is implemented by monitoring phi and v parameters and adjusting the value of q according to these inputs uh, this is the output membership, which is single tone type uh, variable. Since single tone fuzzy set in the consequent of fuzzy rule base provides simple computation, its implementation is favored in resource limited hardware. Therefore, the processing time is reduced using single tone type membership function, but the representation of this membership function. Uh, uh, as shown in the figure where uh, Mamadani doesn't support single tone so I first selected triangle membership function and then uh, made uh, them as narrow as possible with unity to be in the shape resembling the original single tone the output membership function are single photon SSSL where S is small and L is large and M is medium and so on. The rule base uh, depends on the uh, movement of uh, finger. So if the movement speed of finger is normal, phi is uh, M and innovation sequence V is small. So V is S, Q, K designed to be normal value. If the movement speed of uh, finger is low and innovation sequence is small, uh, v is uh, S, so the value of QK is to be a smaller value. If the movement speed of finger is fast and the innovation sequence is large, then QK is set to be larger value. Since larger value of QK supports fast tracking, and uh, if the movement speed of finger is normal and the innovation sequence is normal, then QK is designed to be normal value as ML. Um, the results uh, shown in the slide estimating the touched position using this proposed algorithm yields favorable trajectory smoothen smoothness when QK is adjusted to eliminate the variation of measurement noise. This figure shows the error in proposed method which is displays in V parameter as an innovation sequence that the representation of error between measured and touched position. Uh, conclusions. Fuzzy logic controller is used to solve the problems of unknown nonlinear functions and uncertainty. The approximation and estimation of function in many applications are achieved uh, to overcome nonlinearity and uncertainty. CTP is an application of unknown nonlinear function and uncertainty where the sensor detects the touching of touch panel and decide if there is an error or not. As TKF was failed to estimate the movement finger with low speed, the low speed problem is solved by FLAS TKF method that is used to measure and quantify the smoothness of touch trajectory, the performance of FLA STKF has been evaluated and it was shown that it can successfully achieve an accurate estimation of touched position. The fuzzy, the fuzzy logic uh, integration with STKF future work can be used uh, with the localization algorithm to deal with unknown nonlinear and uncertainty functions in order to increase the accuracy with random based wireless sensor network. On the other hand, it can be used with adaptive filter with fuzzy logic system to reduce the error resulting from nonlinear systems such as target tracking. Hi, everyone. We certainly will find during this coming of 19 pandemic. I want to thank all the organizers of this conference and I'm pleased to attend this session of 2022. In this today's conference, I will be presenting a paper titled Smart Gardening Automation System Using IoT with Power Saver. Uh, this paper was jointly prepared by a group of researchers from the Moody University of Science and Technology, and I'm presenter of this paper. My name is uh, Mohammed Ahmed Gedi. 
I wish you will find this work informative and helpful. And we will begin with uh, our outline, uh, which is almost Russian uh, background the study, problems, pigmenty, objectives of the study, significant literature review, methodology, experiment of this study, uh, conclusion is, and finally we will talk about recommendations. So, first, the farming is the economy. Uh, center of Somalia and modern environment as the global population continues to rise a uh, breakneck pace agriculture has become more increasingly critical to meeting the needs of the human race agriculture on the other hand requires irrigation and when the water usage exceeds rainfall each year it becomes a vital for producers to develop strategies to conserve water while still attaining the best output possible so the system or the system development can help us to control the water uh, uh, motor automatically and can also monitor uh, the growth of plants using iot so we can watch live streaming of the farm on mobile uh, phone using suitable application developed by using wi-fi network um, so the system is mean hard it's much control so if we uh, make a brief about the background or if we make historical uh, historical perspective or historical background agriculture is the backbone of somalia's economy in today's world as we see rapid growth in global population agriculture has become more important to meet the needs of the human race however agriculture requires irrigation and on earth with every year more water consumption than, than rainfall it becomes critical for growers to find more way to conserve water while still achieving IST productivity. So generally the current irrigation system are manually operated. Uh, so these are replaced with semi-automatic or automatic techniques suggested an automatic concept for irrigation using water efficiently or effectively. So sensor-based uh, automatic irrigation system is based on soil moisture sensor that will measure the level of the level of the moisture in the in the, in the, the moisture in the in the soil so and send the signal to Arduino and accordingly it will irrigate the crops Blownies make up the largest irrigated crops uh, by surface area in Somalia and carry uh, with a demand for nine billion gallons of fresh water each day despite recent developments in irrigation control and sprinkler technology state of the aggregation system do nothing to compensate for areas of tar with heterogeneous water needs so it, in this work we overcome the physical limitation of the traditional irrigation system with the development of this system that can tell uh, that can sense the soil moisture and communicate wirelessly and it also actuate uh, uh, sprinkle based uh, on a centrally commute centrally uh, computed schedule so problem statement smart garden automation system using iot power server is the system we develop and is very important in life as we move faster uh, uh, from the manual uh, way to irrigate the uh, garden uh, or farm so in this project we, we will develop a smart irrigation and monitoring system using arduino so the parameters involved mainly a temperature uh, and soil moisture. So in this system, it's a substitute for classical farming method. It helps the farmer to know his field's status and his uh, while residing in his home or other parts of the world. So this system is only provides comfort, but also reduces energy. So the first is to develop a smart gardening uh, to use IoT as lower cost and has the potential for mass production. So the second one is to design and implement energy efficient, which uh, can consume the least power and give us the perfect approach or and give us a smart irrigation system uh, using this approach IoT. So the third one is to design Wi-Fi connectable using an IoT device. So the methodology so the system description the system uses soil measurement uh, sensors to complement the climatic parameters to completely predict the irrigation uh, needs of the crop so the process data are then sent to the hardware four sensors are used and we will uh, later see the four sensors which are LDR sensor 
temperature sensor, soil moisture sensor, and humidity. So LDR is the abbreviation of light dependent resistor, which is a kind of a sensor that uh, depends on the resistivity on the material. So the system provides water only when the water level goes beyond the reference line. So the output can be viewed through the LCD uh, and also can be viewed in an app developed uh, by the team. So the equipment to use it are all these microcontroller, soil measure, uh, sensor, uh, water pump, uh, capacitor, relay module, tourel regulated power supplies, batteries, which are 9 volts and 12 volts. We use resistors and we also use uh, LCD as an output device. So the overall system uh, uh, are shown in this figure. So you can see the red, the green bucket, uh, which contains soil, and it's uh, dipped by the, the moisture sensor. The other uh, uh, bucket uh, is filled with water, and there is a, a motor inside it, which can carry uh, uh, the water uh, through the blaze that's needed. Uh, for it. So the main plot diagram of the system are these we used for uh, uh, sensories as an input device. We power the match control and we uh, use uh, the Wi-Fi module to connect to an app. We also use LCD display uh, to uh, show uh, some results uh, on the status of the of the of the soil. So we use the relay then to connect it to the DC motor, uh, which uh, uh, makes uh, the drive uh, the DC motor and carry uh, some water to the plant. So we also use it uh, driver circuit for the uh, lights, so DC LED lights. So this is a node MCU used uh, for the system. So this node MCU uh, uh, helps us to uh, connect uh, to null uh, up um, application device. So these are uh, two power supplies uh, connected. Uh, this, this, this is the power supply circuit which is connected to our uh, system. So these are the two relays and the two batteries used for this project. So water pumping. So the main function of the water pumping is to produce the water. Uh, we used a submersible uh, bump mini water. So for fountain garden is that is it's used for fountain uh, DIY projects. So this is a low cost small size uh, bump which can be operated uh, from uh, three to six volt power supply per hour with very low current consumption of 120. Uh, milliamps. So just connect to your pipe to the motor outlet, submit it into the water and power it. So if you are using this kind of uh, water pump, you have to make sure uh, that the water level is also higher than the motor. Uh, dry run may damage the motor due to heating. And it also uh, produce some kind of noise. So this is uh, the water pump that's inside the, 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 the pink uh, bucket and it is it uh, for irrigation. So this is the output of the system uh, and this is one part of LCD and the other part is the, the right part, the application uh, developed. So the main target is this LCD and it shows us the status or the situation uh, of the soil. So it's just night and the temperature recorded is 32. And the humidity of the water, uh, of the humidity of the uh, soil is 95. The temperature of the soil is 32. So conclusion, this is of this project. The, the, this report has been designed and uh, tested successfully, this project. So it has been developed by integrated features uh, of all hardware components used. The system has been tested to function automatically. The moisture sensor measure the moisture level of the different plants. 
if the moisture level goes below the desired or limited level, the moisture sensor sends the signal to the Arduino board, which triggers the water pump to turn on and supply the water to the respective uh, plant to, to, to irrigate. So the water, uh, when the when the desired moisture level is triggered, so the motor pump uh, turn it, turns off and starts the uh, uh, stops uh, the flow of the water so the functionality of the entire system of the entire system has been tested thoroughly and the state and say to function uh, uh, successfully so we recommend the recommendation we would like to recommend people to use uh, future researchers to use sms uh, uh, module in their system uh, to make it easy, people who don't have a smartphone uh, to uh, get a report easily uh, while they are residing in their home. Uh, for example, if you are using a non-smartphone, so uh, it's it's very simple. Uh, it's the future researchers, researchers might make or might fill this gap. Uh, so there are many other systems that we can use uh, for this, like GB, GBRS or GSM to address our needs. So then we can get rid of the complicated software. So everyone who cannot program as much as possible, be a form that has, doesn't need a software can make it easier for us to connect to our mobile. So I hope you are uh, uh, you fully understand. Or thank you. Any question is. Hello everyone and welcome to this conference paper. Uh, here we'll talk about smart home appliance control in the IoT era. I'm Usman Abdullah, I'm a master student in nearest university. Before we go inside the paper and discuss about it, let's take a quick look at what is a smart home and what's the difference between smart home and traditional home. So smart home, from smart home or from your smart home, you can check the weather outside and it's, if it's sunny, rainy and so on. This process to check it or to complete, suppose your home connected via Wi-Fi and every electronic device should be connected with the Wi-Fi. Then you will be able to control uh, AC, you can turn it on, turn it off, and you can control the temperature. And also, very easy, you can control your light switching on and off. And this process will go in with a smartphone to access your suppliance and control it. And also, you can play your favorite music and watching your favorite show. Also, you can control the TV. You can access your home from your laptop if you are outside and control your supplies. And also, you can control with your tablet. And here also we have very small thing is IRS recognition. You can make it in lock, doors, and so on. So the smart home or smart house, uh, this technology, smart home technologies, is increasing day by day. And, they, and that make our life easy, simple, and very comfortable. Uh, here we have similar project. Uh, in this project, we use the brand uh, ASP microcontroller, and we have relay module, and we have manual switch. Also, we have Amazon Alexa. First thing we have to control uh, to connect uh, uh, manual switching with the brand or the process microprocessor, and also we must connect the relay 
So the relay is uh, convert the voltage from high to low and vice versa. After that, you must connect the ASP32 with uh, Wi-Fi, of course, and then you will be able to control or you access your CCTV. You can control your fan, light, and your TV with voice command. And the problem here in this method is only use one method to connect and that method is the Wi-Fi connection and also other thing one more additional thing this method will work in local LAN so if you forget anything on and you went out so you have one of two choice come back or leave it until you come back after you finish your work and also here in other example, other similar project, we use uh, ASP32 and we connect it with uh, Wi-Fi and we connect it with plain cloud server. To connect uh, ASP with uh, plain server, you must download a plain application and also you have to register in this application then they will send you like serial number in your email this serial number you have to uh, put it in your code and also you need to download library blank server library and upload it in ASP32 also this application is over two methods Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and you can choose one of them to connect to control your uh, appliance and also uh, if you choose a Wi-Fi this Wi-Fi will work in local uh, area network and in this slide I want to mention something the IoT microcontroller is not just for uh, control lights control uh, fan and AC uh, also there is a many of application you can use it uh, as you see here we used uh, or he used this uh, microcontroller to plant monitoring system you can use it in water system you can use it in smart city uh, like uh, smart education smart parking and so on there is uh, uh, really many applications to use uh, IoT microcontroller in our literature review we have conversion between uh, our app and different app we have new app and we have different methods to control the lights or uh, any electrical device in your home. Uh, you can control it with switch button, voice command or fingerprint. Uh, also we have face detection. Also we have three main methods to connect with your uh, any electrical device. We have mobile data and we have Wi-Fi and we have Bluetooth. So we can use Bluetooth if you are nearby your home to connect. If you are outside your home or so far or outside the country, you can choose one of two Wi-Fi or mobile data. In other application, for example, under uh, Arduino Bluetooth controller, we have only switch button and voice command and there is the only method to connect and that method is the bluetooth and also in arduino voice controller we have only voice command to control and we have one method to connect it's the bluetooth also we have arduino bluetooth controller design and also it have switch button and voice command and only one method is the bluetooth Arduino Wi-Fi LAN control. We have a switch button and we have Wi-Fi. But this Wi-Fi use LAN, so you can't control from outside. Also in this table we have different of microcontrol. Uh, in our research we use ESP32 uh, because ESP32 it has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. And the cost is very cheap 
In Arduino, we, you need uh, uh, external Wi-Fi and external part of Bluetooth, and also it's cheap. But after you buy the external stuff, the cost will increase. In Raspberry Pi, it has uh, Wi-Fi. For Bluetooth, you need external part, and it's very expensive. Uh, in the new version of Raspberry Pi, actually, they they have a built-in Bluetooth module, mm -hmm. but still the cost will be expensive. Here we have system uh, architecture. We have three main methods to connect Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and mobile data. So from our mobile app or mobile application, directly we set the command to ASP32. ASP32 sends the command to relay so the relay will convert from high volt from low volt to high volt and then you will uh, you can control your electrical device here we have flow chart and how the process work we have two methods so uh, from start to end first thing application will check if you are connected uh, with the bluetooth or not if no you will going back to start if yes you can access your data and send the command to asp and asp send it to a relay send relay will control and switching on and off here if we choose a wi-fi connection first thing the application will check if you are connected with wi-fi or not if no you will going to start if yes you can access send the process send it to ASP32. ASP32 will send it to database. From database, going back to relay, and the relay convert that volt from low to high, and you can control the light and switching. If it if it on, will be off. If it off, will be on. Here in our result. We make explanation with a different type of uh, mobile smartphone. We have uh, S20s Samsung, and we have Samsung S9 Plus, and we have Huawei Y9, and we have also Techno, we have Note 9, and also laptops. And we see here laptops is scored the best result, and that why because the laptop have high uh, type like big size of RAM and also the high speed of CPU or processor and in the middle we can see Huawei record uh, also a good result uh, and then the Tecno is records the uh, uh, last result and that because the size of RAM and speed of microprocessor and also here we have different type of network uh, we use ethernet and wi-fi and mobile data so the ethernet is record or scored the best result and that why because the ethernet giving you the full speed is not like mobile data or wi-fi sharing the speed with uh, other users and also the Wi-Fi records the second uh, result uh, and mobile data is the last result. And also here we have different type of RAM and responding time. Uh, 8 GB RAM is record scored the best result and 4 GB RAM is the last result. And also here we have uh, uh, the cost between ASP32 and Arduino Uno device and uh, Raspberry Pi. So you can get the same idea, the same project, but with a different uh, cost. In ASP, you have everything, no need to uh, buy external part, and the cost is like 42.12. Door and for Arduino, after you buy external part, 
it's like 60.70 dollar for Raspberry Pi is 168.49 48 so the Raspberry Pi is very expensive and we know now why it's very expensive and here we have CPU speed of microcontroller uh, for ESP it's like 240 megahertz per second and for Arduino Uno it's 16 uh, megahertz for Raspberry Pi it's 700 and now we know why the Raspberry Pi is expensive and uh, but for ESP32 the, the speed is acceptable it's not too fast and not too slow and here we have a screenshot from uh, web page control as I mentioned you can access to this web page and if you have or you want to add new device all you will have to do is like fill these forms and click on create output directly you will see other button you can easy connect uh, control it switching on and off and also here we have application uh, app screenshots uh, and this page is the main page and you can see we have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and mobile data. So here in the Bluetooth page you can click on Bluetooth directly connected with the device and then you will see we have four type switch button, voice command and fingerprint and face detection. Also, we have here two circuit, blue circuit down there. Control with the voice and stop voice control. Once you click control with the voice, directly we can control the app, all the app with your voice. For example, once you click, you say Bluetooth will open the Bluetooth and menu, you can see the Bluetooth device and connect with it. You can say like Wi-Fi, we're going to Wi-Fi page and control uh, your device. Here we have screenshot from Wi-Fi page. We'll see here Wi-Fi is connected. And uh, after that, it's easy. You can control with the switch, fingerprint, voice command, and face detection. And this page for mobile data. As you see here, I'm connected with uh, uh, Wi-Fi and showing me mobile data is disconnected uh, because I'm using Wi-Fi so if I want control from here will not allow me to control it switching on and switching off uh, in our conclusions uh, our project consists of creating an intelligent control system to control light with Wi-Fi Bluetooth and mobile data uh, we have also the possibility to control the light with a smartphone at the same time. Our intelligence system achieved its satisfied result. <coughs> uh, and also we use three main uh, methods to connect Wi-Fi, mobile data and Bluetooth and, they, and that make our uh, approach more effect and increasing the life uh, span of the lamp uh, and also we make like three of methods in one application and that uh, makes the user have multiple options to connect it and that everything about uh, this paper and thank you for attention and see you. Hello. Um, welcome all. Um, today I would like to present a paper, a framework for portal detection via the AI and blockchain integration. Um, actually, in this presentation, we will talk about, we will see the introduction, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, blockchain, the data 
the data sets collections and data pre-processing, model development, performance evaluation, and conclusion. So actually, um, roads uh, contribute significantly to the economy and to the all activities of human beings. So it is also very important to understand or to find out um, things that uh, can be an obstruction to people's health and other things. So for example, when you look at portals on roads, they cause a lot of accidents um, in the world uh, on yearly basis. So it is good or important to develop a model that will detect portals and then at the same time will alert um, users of the road so that they should be cautious and in order to prevent accidents and other um, damages. So first of all, I would like to briefly talk about um, um, artificial intelligence. Actually, as previous speakers talked about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is kind of a, it's a way of making a, a computer or a machine to make useful decisions, like intelligent decisions. For example, we give our computers um, some variables and at the end we try to make uh, that system to make decision about some certain things. For example, we apply this in speech recognition, visions, we have natural language processing, expert systems and robotics. So on the machine learning, we have the predictive analysis and we have the deep learning whereby we have classification and uh, prediction or regression as, as, um, or regression. So these techniques, we give the model, we teach the model or the model learn from certain parameters and then at the end it tries to perform the expected task. So also I would like to discuss about the Internet of Things. So in this era of Internet of Things, a lot of um, appliances or sensors are being connected to the internet also 5g and then they share and also retrieve data from these devices so smart cities are being uh, coming up this time around whereby almost everything the dualogs um, sensors everything have been connected to the internet they share data and then they make decisions using artificial intelligence in this era so the Internet of Things um, is something that is coming up and that we have to live with it in the nearest future. So also we have the blockchain, whereby it's a, a distributed ledger, actually. Records are being stored and then they are being like a kind of formatted in such a way that, for example, when you look at people's fingerprints, you will know that everyone has a unique fingerprint. So we try to hash this data and then so that it can have a unique um, identity and then we share it among the blocks. So even if someone tries to tamper with the data, so there must be a consensus on that particular data. If the consensus is more than 50%, then that node will be allowed to change. If not, then it will be there and nothing will be changed from one block to another. So there are two types of blockchains. We have the public and then the private, whereby in the public, everyone have access to it, and in the private, only the selected people have access to see that particular data. So in this whole study, we were trying to detect um, portals on roads. So first of all, we tried to collect some data from the roads around us and then some data from the internet whereby we annotate the data using RoboFlow, which is an online tool. We added the bounding boxes in the region of interest and then at the end we augmented the data so that we can increase, increase the number of data and also to make the model more robust and to prevent overfitting. So in this model development, what you actually did was that we train the model in such a way that it will detect um, the portals. So there is a 
family of um, these deep learning models or object detectors, which is efficient detection. It's an API whereby we try to use three members of the family, which are D0, D2, and D4. We started from the lightweight, which is D0. It has a um, kind of a smaller network. And then the D4 has a larger network or deeper network, but um, it's more accurate actually. So at the end, we try to balance between um, accuracy and speed in order to have a model and optimized model that will perform better. So in this, we train the model to detect the portals. And then after we train the model, we try to deploy the model into a mobile application whereby we can detect the portals in real time. So this is the first part actually, that is the computation part, the sensing part. And then we propose a model whereby the coordinates of that particular portals will be saved in a ledger using the blockchain. And then when users um, approach that particular area whereby the portal is being detected, then and a warning system will pop up and then we'll try to warn the motorists. And for example, if there is a maintenance work that is being carried out in that particular place when the car or the any user with this mobile app that comes across this um, repaired place, then when the model checks and it says that there is no portal there again, then it will try to update on the network and then it will not provide any warning system in the future. So with this, we can keep um, a real time track of all portals around the uh, roads and it is not limited to particular routes. It can be applied to whichever route that we want so far. It has been, um, the mobile application has been connected to the internet and then it will be shared. So, this is something that we are working on. We've already implemented the computer vision part, and now we are working on the blockchain part in order to integrate the two and then try to make uh, uh, the whole system in the future, which will be soon, hopefully. Uh, this is just a small part of the whole project. So to determine the best model, actually, we look at the performance criteria of these models, and we find out that at uh, the model, which is D2, achieve a mean average precision of 97%. And the D2, it's kind of uh, fast and also accurate at the same time. Um, unlike the D4, which is more accurate, but um, it is a little bit slow. Uh, while the D0 is fast, but um, it is a little bit accurate. So we try to balance between these three models and we took the D2 and deployed it into the mobile app. So this is just a sample of um, the detection of the model. So we try to detect some portals and then it will pop up the, it will put the bounding box around the portal that it detected and then the accuracy. So this is just a small example of it. And then later on, when we complete the whole system, we'll have uh, uh, the data recording of the coordinates, and then um, we'll have um, we'll connect everything to to the internet, and then it will be live in the future. So this is the main thing that we've worked on, and this is so far we have gotten, and we're still working on this project. So. In this um, presentation, actually, we've seen that um, the performance of these three um, efficient that um, model families, which is the D0, D2, D4. And also we've seen how to optimize by tr um, trading between the accuracy and the speed. And also the model shows the capability of um, detecting these portals and also in the Second piece, we'll try to in, uh, integrate the blockchain and then this uh, and the detection models in order to work together in real time in order to have a good uh, morning system for motorists and dudes. So thank you all for listening. And if there are questions, please uh, feel free to ask.
Thank you so much. Catching a bus, never feeling a stream.